Let's talk about continuity. My name's Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at University of Texas El Paso and an associate professor, excuse me, assistant professor at Doña Ana Community College. This is for Math 1411, Calculus at UTEP. Chapter 1, Limits and Their Properties, comes from Larson's 11th edition of Calculus. Uh, section 1.3, Continuity and One-Sided Limits, and in this particular part of the lecture, we're going to talk specifically about continuity. All right, continuity. A function f is continuous at c if the following three conditions are met. First of all, f of c has to be defined. We have to be able to find a value. The limit has to exist, and if you watched part one of this particular section, you know that that means the limit from the right must equal the limit from the left. Not only does the limit have to exist and the function value have to be defined, but they must be equal to each other. That's very important. Okay, so that's continuous at a value c. A function is continuous on an open interval if it is continuous at each point in the interval. A function that is continuous on the entire real line is called everywhere continuous, and we'll see several of those functions in this lecture. So we know what needs to happen for a function to be continuous. Let's look at a couple of ways that a function can fail to be continuous. First of all, maybe the function is not defined. The graph looks great, but there's a hole, so it's not continuous. Uh, the limit doesn't exist. Maybe the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right. Even though the function's defined, the limit doesn't exist. And this is what could happen. If the limit exists, the function is defined, but they're not equal to each other. So all three conditions must be met before a function can be continuous. Neither of these, none of these, are continuous functions. A function f is continuous on a closed interval. If it's continuous on an open interval, and the limit from the right as x approaches a is equal to f of a, and the limit from the left as x approaches b is equal to f of b. So our endpoints hold up with the continuity with one-sided limits. Some properties of continuity. Continuity is really nice. It behaves like we would want it to behave if we had to develop this. If b is a real number and f, of g, f and g are continuous at x equals c, then the scalar multiple is continuous. A sum or difference of continuous functions is continuous. The product of continuous functions is continuous. And the quotient of continuous functions is continuous as long as we don't have the zero function in the denominator. What this tells us is most of our elementary functions are continuous on their domains. The key points to consider are the values that are not in the domain. So if it's in the domain, we're good to go. If it's not in the domain, that's where we focus our attention. So piecewise defined functions are a great way of looking at limits, uh, excuse me, at continuity. We want to make sure these pieces match up. So we're going to find the constant a, such that the function is continuous on the entire real line. We know that to be continuous, the limit from the left must be equal to the limit from the right and be equal to the function value. Now I know 2x squared is continuous on its domain. For real numbers a, ax minus 3 is continuous on its domain. The only possible problem spot will be here at 1. So, I look at 1. As x approaches 1 from the left of f of x, from the left less than, I'll have the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of ax minus 3. Well, I know that x is approaching 1, so I substitute a 1 in for x. a times 1 minus 3 we would simplify as a minus 3. Somewhat unsatisfactory because we still don't know what a is, but let's continue. As we look at the function from the right of 1, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x is the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of 2x squared, because those are the x values larger than 1 from the right. When we evaluate 2x squared at 1, we get 2. All right, what does this tell us? Well, we know the limit from the left is a minus 3, and we know the limit from the right is 2. For the function to be continuous, it must be that these two values are equal. A minus 3 equals 2, we can add 3 to both sides and find our A value must be 5. It's exactly what we wanted. We found the constant A to be 5. 
to make these two functions match up at their, at their cut value. Let's do another example. Find the constant a such that the function is continuous on the entire real line. This time our function g of x is 9 sine of x over x for all x values that are less than 0 and a minus 8x for all x values greater than or equal to 0. Again, we check from the left and from the right. We want to make sure these match up. Uh, our top piece is continuous on its domain. The domain does not include 0, but neither does the domain restriction, so that's good. We know this piece is continuous. We know that this polynomial type expression is also continuous on its domain, so we check the cut value of 0. The limit as x approaches 0 from the left of g of x, from the left, we use the top piece, that's the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of 9 sine x over x. We can factor out that constant. 9 times the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of sine x over x is 9 times 1, right, our special limit from the squeeze theorem. 9 times 1 equals 9. From the right, as x approaches 0 from the right of g of x, from the right I'm going to use a minus 8x. When I substitute an x value of 0, I'll have a minus 0, which is a. For this function to be continuous, the limit from the left, 9, must be equal to the limit from the right, a. So a has to be 9. We found our value. This one's a little more challenging. Find the constants a and b such that the function is continuous on the entire real line. Now, our strategy will be to see what needs to happen to make the function continuous at the first cut point. That's when x is negative 3. Then, see what needs to happen at the second cut point of x equals 2. So we'll get some information from our first cut point, we'll get some information from our second cut point, and then that will allow us to solve a system of equations in order to find a and b. Here we go. At x equals negative 3, I know that as x approaches negative 3 from the left, my output is 4, always. As x approaches negative 3 from the right, so x values greater than or equal to negative 3, right, I read it backwards, from the right, ax minus b, I substitute a 3 for my x, excuse me, a negative 3 for my x, don't forget that negative, negative 3a minus b from the right, 4 from the left, we have negative 3a minus b equals 4. I have no idea what a or b, either one, are at this point. When x equals 2, right, x values less than or equal to 2, so from the left, I'll have the part ax minus b, 2a minus b. When x values are approaching 2 from the right, values bigger than x, I know my output is negative 4, and that's my limit. The limit of a constant is the constant. So if 2a minus b equals negative 4, again, it doesn't tell me anything about a or b. But now I have two equations, 2a minus b equals negative 4, and negative 3a minus b equals a positive 4. I can solve the system of equations. Uh, when I solve this system of equations, which is great in another lecture on pre-calculus, you will find that a equals negative 8 fifths and b equals 4 fifths. And if you need a review of that, Feel free to pause right now, make sure you can find those values, make sure you understand how you can do it, and then come back. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section and I will write it out for you. Alright, new examples. Find the x values, if any, at which f is not continuous. Which of the discontinuities are removable? Let's start with a fact here. A discontinuity, discontinuity is removable if it can be factored out or otherwise dealt with. Right? So if we get a 0 over 0 and we can simplify it and find a limit, it can be removable. So f of x equals 3 over x minus 2. This function is not continuous at x equals 2. We really only have to look at values not in the domain. This particular discontinuity is not removable because there's no way we could factor out an x minus 2 with just the information in this function f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 1 is a polynomial, so it is everywhere continuous. There are no discontinuities. f of x equals 1 over x squared plus 1. I only have to look at values not in the domain, but notice x squared is 0 or positive, so 0 or higher. 
When I add one, my denominator is one or larger. Therefore, my denominator is never zero. This domain consists of all real numbers. This function is everywhere continuous. The function f of x equals x over x squared minus one. We are missing domain values of positive and negative one. So the function is not continuous there. I can't substitute an x equals one or an x equals negative one, and I can't factor away that discont those discontinuities. Now we're getting into something that tells us good information. f of x equals x minus six over x squared minus 36. We know that both x equals six and x equals negative six are not in the domain of this function. But if we simplify, if I factor out uh, my difference of squares in the denominator and I have x minus six over x plus six, notice that they're both discontinuities, right? Six and negative six. However, the discontinuity at x equals six is removable because I can cancel that out. x equals six is not in the domain of our function, but x equals six is a removable discontinuity because it has a common factor with the numerator. x equals negative six, nothing we can do about that. That's a discontinuity that cannot be removed. So in a piecewise defined function, we want to find the x values at which f is not continuous. But what do we know? We know that we only have to check the cut value because x itself is a polynomial, it's continuous on its domain. We know that x squared itself, a polynomial, is continuous on its domain. So if each piece is continuous, we only have to check the possibility of the cut value as a discontinuity. So I check. The limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x. From the left, I'm going to use limit as x approaches 1 from the left of x, which is 1. Then I'll check from the right. The limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x. Those are values greater than 1. Is the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of x squared. When we substitute 1, 1 squared is 1. Fantastic. Both the limit from the left and the limit from the right of the function value equal 1. We also know that x, when x is equal to 1, the output is 1. The function value exists, the limit exists, and the limit is equal to the function value. Therefore, this function is continuous everywhere. We're wrapping this up with a fact and theorem. The continuity of a composite function, if g is continuous at c and f is continuous at g of c, then the composite function f composed with g of x is also continuous at c. So continuity not only holds through sums, differences, products, and quotients, it also holds through composition. Great news.